Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I'm Star. Today, I'm here with a dream. In this dream, I saw a woman traveling via bus. Like, she was on a bus. And she decides to get off the bus. And go a different route. So, it's kind of like... Yeah, she was on a certain bus. She was going wherever that bus was leading her, but she was kind of frustrated with the people she was on the bus with, frustrated with the bus line in general, and she decides to go ahead and get off that bus and hop on another bus. And when she gets to that bus, she ends up, like, the destination, she ends up somewhere else, and she's like, you know what? Fresh start. The scripture comes from Jubilees 13 and 4. And he built an altar there, and he offered a burnt sacrifice thereon to the Lord, who appeared to him. So here's the message. God said for somebody, sometimes it's nothing wrong with a fresh start. It's nothing wrong with a fresh start. Sometimes a fresh start is what you need, baby. Baby, regardless to if it is a temporary start, a temporary fresh new place, or if it's a permanent fresh new place, God says sometimes it's what you need. So, like, I just feel like sometimes it's literally a breath of fresh air. And I'm thinking about um, this movie, once again, What the Heart Is, it's a beautiful movie, you know what I'm saying? As, you know, I was talking about it before, and, you know, some people uh, were saying in the comment section, it is an older movie, but I just recently found it, and I fell in love with that movie. And it's about a young woman that was in the system because her mom was awful, terrible, terrible awful and you know she has just basically been bounced around from home to home um she gets pregnant and what was supposed to happen was the guy that got her pregnant was supposed to come get her and they were supposed to relocate to what um uh, i think he wanted to go to california somewhere in california because he wanted to be a musician and he ends up taking her to walmart to use the restroom, and he leaves her there. He leaves her in the Walmart, in the middle, like she has no idea where she is. They were literally traveling for no, no telling how long. She lost her shoes because he had a hole in his car. Her shoes fell through the hole. She asked him to give her some money so she could get the, uh, some shoes. She goes in a Walmart, uses the restroom, gets her shoes, um, was about to get herself something to eat, and she realized that I think it was like five o'clock or something like that. And she has this thing about fives. So, or her change, her change was five dollars and fifty five cents. So she goes outside and leaving her change, and she sees, she realizes that he left her. Goes back in the Walmart, gets something to eat, and she ends up living there for a little while. Um, while she's living there. You know, this movie, as the comments under in the movie, you know, about this movie have said, people have said about this movie, that it, it's at a time where Walmart was still more of a wholesome place. It was, it wasn't um, the corporation that it has become today. She was literally living in there. She would, you know, take her little shower in there. She had a little... Um, what do you sleeping bag that she would use and when she finished she rolled it back up neatly put it back put the little shower thing back she it was like she was just trying to cause minimal problems and she was just trying to be as discreet as possible um eventually she leaves and starts walking around the town she finds the library um she meets a woman that uh gives her like a goodie basket and a tree and i you know my first time watching i thought the woman really did mistake in her but the second time i think that she did that on purpose just so that she would feel comfortable but she knew that she did not know her and she just wanted to give her the um basket she had and she wanted to give her something because she saw the situation she was in and as somebody you know I grew up in a city, but I, I lived in a small town before. And typically, when you live in a small town, you're going to notice a new face. It's not hard. You know what I'm saying? It's going to stick out. And it don't matter how many people. You know what I'm saying? 
Because, down, I stay there with number 10 family. You're going to notice somebody that's new, something that's strange. You're going to notice. Like, everybody know everybody. And, you know what I'm saying? Even the nearest town, it was like 2,000 people, but it still was a situation where everybody knew everybody. It's not a situation where you're going to be able to navigate it. Ain't, gonna, ain't nobody going to notice that you there. they going to notice. they going to peep it. they going to, you know what I'm saying? But anyways... She starts basically just meeting the people in the town, getting to know different people. Everybody welcomes her. Everybody is very warm to her. And um, long story short, that ends up being the place that she lives. That ends up being her home. Even though it wasn't where she was born, it wasn't where she grew up, she, her parents weren't there, she had no family, no nothing when she first came to that town but she uh eventually had a best friend she found met her husband she raised her daughter there she helped her friend raise her kids there she you know what i'm saying found a mother figure and a father figure there and you know what i'm saying for whoever this is for god says sometimes you you know you get put in situations life life will throw all types of twists and turns your way and it will put you in a position to where you you have to start over sometimes you got to start over and one thing that i really loved about this movie is while the movie shows her progressing in this town it also shows the guy that left her at that walmart and what he was going through and i was like wow it's like his life was he was going through twists and turns so he was god it, it's like god was just like bah, 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 getting him getting him for what he did and towards the end of the movie he could still hear her voice from when she told him to put his hand on her stomach and feel the baby's heartbeat, feel the baby kicking. And he was talking about, nah, I don't feel nothing. And then he left her and his child at Walmart. And you know what I'm saying? And you know, towards the end, he was trying to get to her. He eventually make his way back there. And he's trying to find her. He's trying to find her. So he can let her know that he did, in fact, feel the kick and that he lied and he was scared. And that's why he left. And then after that, she took him back to where he wanted to go, dropped him off there, left him there, and went on about her business. And I'm just telling you this, I'm telling y'all this message because I feel like it's, it's important for somebody. Somebody, you are going to get a fresh start. And it's going to be like you're going to have a whole new life than the life that you live now. And it's, it's going to be interesting. And it doesn't mean that everybody in your current life is bad. Some of them could be good. Because she had friends that she took pictures with before she left. She didn't get to see them again. Um, for one reason or another. I, I found that weird. They didn't incorporate them back in the movie. But I don't know. But anyways, it's just like... Um, her mom came up to the hospital and robbed her of her little $500. And you know what I'm saying? Acting like she was going to come and be a good Mima. And in reality, she came up there to gloat in her daughter's face and mock her. And you know what I'm saying? Make fun of her. Which is crazy to me because the whole time I'm thinking, this is your daughter and your granddaughter. Your daughter was living in a Walmart because she had nowhere else to stay. And you think that's funny? You should be ashamed of yourself. That, that's your responsibility. That's your responsibility. That's your, your, your blood. Your kid. Your child. That you left to chase after some man. That you hurt on your way out of there. And you have the audacity to feel as though you better than nah. And I, I like, I, I think that's one thing that pointed out to me. Because when somebody came and uh, kidnapped her baby, she was in full panic. And she didn't know what to do. She was stressed out. And she was like, maybe this is what I deserve. And the heartbreaking thing about that there is the fact that she had a mother that was so wicked and so evil and so mean and so conniving that she gladly left her daughter to go and chase after some man. 
where her daughter was so focused on her own child that it literally broke her heart that somebody would try to take her away from her. And I just feel like just because you come from a place, just because you come from a certain kind of person, just because, you know what I'm saying, it don't mean that that's how you're going to be. And I feel like that's another part of this message. Just because you grew up and maybe your parent mistreated you. Maybe you, you know, you got abused. Maybe you were, you know, mistreated in whatever way. I, I don't know why God is saying something about starvation. Like somebody, you weren't able to eat. Or maybe you weren't, like, you you know what I'm saying? I, I was uh, watching one video where uh, someone said that they parent deliberately cooked stuff they didn't like on purpose. So that they would either not have anything to eat or that they would get sick. And, you know what I'm saying, as a means of punishment. And I, I just feel like there are some really wicked people in this world. But just because you had to endure what you had to endure don't mean that that, that you're going to turn into that. I feel this is somebody you're not going to be like them. Even if you do have to pack up whatever little stuff you got and get on the bus and ride to wherever. And like I said, in this dream, this woman, God, she was going to one location specifically. And then she said, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going somewhere else. And she ended up exactly what she was supposed to be. And God said, for whoever this is for, where you end up, when you get there, you are going to build an altar to God. Now, altar to God, it don't have to be fancy. God said it don't have to be fancy. It could literally be you getting to your new spot, being like, okay, I got my house now, pulling out your Bible, reading some scriptures, praying to God, glorifying God. You know what I'm saying? If you, you really want to get fancy with it, get you some oil, bless the oil, sprinkle the oil around the place, make you some... um. Spiritual water, make you some uh some cleansing water and, and pour the water around the place. Glorify God, praise God, sing songs or play gospel music, whatever it is that you do. God said, understand, at the moment that you do that though, that place is going to be a, a, a place. It's going to be staple to you. It's going to be it, it's like, I just feel like this is going to be a home. Home is literally where your heart is. It's where the heart is. It's not a situation where you have to um, be in a certain place for it to be home. You don't have to be in a certain place for it to be home. As somebody that has lived in several different places, okay? As, and I'm talking about cities, countries, states, whatever. I have, you know what I'm saying? I've had several houses myself. I, I, I have an understanding that home is not just a specific place. It's where the heart is. It's where you make it your home. You make it your home. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like for whoever this is for, God said this place is going to be home for you. This is going to be a place that's going to be home for you. And it's going to be a, a blessed place. This is a place where God is going to bless you. And he left from there to the mountain with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east and pitched his tent there. He saw and behold, the land was very wide and good and everything, everything grew thereon. Vines and figs and pomegranates, oaks and hollies and terebiths and oil trees and cedars and cypresses and date trees and all the trees of the field. And there was water on the mountain. And he blessed the Lord who had led him out of your of the Chaldeans and have brought him to this land. God said, wherever this place is that he's taking you to, the blessings will be many. It's not going to be a situation where you're going to be like, oh no, now what do I do? God said, your blessings will be many. You will be plentiful in this land. This is going to be a place where you are going to flourish. And for somebody... Just like how in the scripture, he got there and he started looking like, wow, look at all this going on. You going to get there and it's going to be stuff there already. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a situation where you just going to be able to add to it, you know. And that's one thing that I learned when I was staying in the country. 
the way that you can tell if the earth is good, if it's a good place for you to grow food, if it's a good place for you to be able to flourish in that sense, is are there other plants there? What is naturally there? If it ain't nothing there, that means you're going to have to work hard to get that dirt going. But if you get there and it's a bunch of stuff that then grew trees and uh, bushes and all kind of stuff, that means the earth is good. The soil is good. Even if you have to take some stuff down, knock some stuff down and move some stuff out the way. Once you get it going, you ain't going to have to do too much. So that's the message. God said for whoever this is for, you may have to make it your own. You may have to make it into like for you. But in reality, this is going to be yours. This is something that you're going to be able to build here. And it don't mean that it's going to come. It takes time, God is saying. So, you know, just because you're going to, like, this is somebody you're about to make a big move. This is going to feel, it's going to feel like you are, this is going to be a big leap for somebody. Turning over a new leaf for somebody. This is going to be, it's going to be huge for you. And when you get there, don't expect that everything going to happen instantly. It's going to take time. And just like in this movie, it took time for, it, it wasn't instantly that she had everything that she had. Because, you know, at first she was about to move away. But when she got ready to move away, she was thinking about moving away after the woman that she was living with passed away. Then she find out that woman left her everything. Everything. And she was shocked. She ain't even like, you know what I'm saying? And she kept her job, but she ain't have to work no more. She was she had money to get a house built. She uh said over and over in the movie that she never stayed in a house that wasn't on wheels. And she was able to have a house built. Not only was she able to have a house built, but after her house was built and her friend, her best friend fell on hard times, she had enough space for them to come and live with her. And I just feel like God is saying that not only are you going to experience people that are going to be a blessing to you, but you will be able to be a blessing to others. This is going to be a beautiful for somebody. This is going to be a home. This is going to be so beautiful. And it's going to be somewhere you never thought you would find yourself. All the places that you're thinking, well, maybe I move here, maybe I move here, maybe here, maybe it'll be here. God said this place has never came to mind. And it's interesting because you know what I'm saying. I know from firsthand that that's how I be. You'll be thinking that God about to send you one place and you end up somewhere completely different and be like, wow. But that's what it is. That's what it is. For whoever this is for, God said he's going to send you somewhere and you're going to make a home there. You're going to have friends. You're going to have family. You're going to be able to really, it's, you are going to have what you never had. You know what I'm saying? And I understand how that can be. Sometimes we can even be in a position to where we do have family and we do have people that we know of associates but we don't have you know like nobody that really that just call and check up on you you want to go out and you know go out to eat or go out to have drinks and you have nobody that you could call and hang out with you want to have a party but you don't have anybody to invite god said he gonna send you to a place where you gonna have plenty you're not going to have to worry about that. It's not going to be a situation where you won't be, where you uh, always feel as though you're left out, regardless as to why. Sometimes it can be a situation where it's just one person that just has so much hate in their heart for you. That they want everybody else to hate you how they hate you. They want everybody else to feel how they feel. God said he going to move you away from this person. And for some of y'all, it could be a situation where he finna take this person up out of here. Because it take the message how you see, how, how it fits. Because sometimes that could be the situation. Because, you know, as I have said before, like, in this dream, how moving... It don't always mean that it's physical. Sometimes it's a mental thing. And if you are in a position 
to where somebody, every time you make a friend, they going behind you trying to ruin that friendship. Every time you get you a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they going behind you trying to ruin your relationship. That person passed on. You, it, it'll be like a change of scenery for you. Because now, every time you make a friend, ain't nobody going in behind you trying to ruin your friendship. Every time you meet somebody, ain't nobody going in behind you trying to mess that up. The people that they was lying to get an opportunity to actually see the real you. The people that used to be nasty and mean to you, now they feel silly because they starting to see that you weren't like that in the first place. But anywho, some way or another, God says somebody, you it's going to be a complete change. A complete change. And for somebody, it could be a situation where this person decides to change. Because, you know, when somebody is, is at, a, at, a, at a point where God has given them an ultimatum, that, you know, and that's just real. And, and that's, but, you know what I'm saying? Take it high. And God said this is something that's going to take time. Regardless, like I said, take it how it fits for you. It's going to take time. Regardless, if it's a situation where somebody is going to be removed from your life, that's going to take time. If it's going to be a situation where you're going to be moved to somewhere else, it's going to take time. Like, it, whatever it is, don't expect it to happen overnight. But God is saying for somebody, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to realize that you are flourishing in this place that God has brought you to. It does not mean it has to be a physical place that God has brought you to. It could literally be a mental state that God has brought you to. But sometimes it is, in fact, a physical place. And that's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Deuces.